here. And and we're back with cold weather. <laughs> right, so we are scraping the um so we are scraping the you know the windscreen again <laughs> in the morning. It's really it's cold again, right? I mean, not like we have snow, but you cannot just go out and whether wearing a leather jacket. You have to put on your winter jacket again, which I don't like. I mean, I love knitting and I love knitwear, but come on, enough is enough, <laughs> right? <laughs> Any excuse to wear it though is good for me. <laughs> Well, and I was also, I mean, part of this, having the soul warmer in March, because I, at least in New England, March is just can be such a brutal month. Um, and just up and down, you can't count on anything. And it just seemed like yeah, it's well, the same is... here. <sighs> it's the same here. You're, you're imagining you I mean, you see the flowers and you see some some of some of the bushes blossoming, right? And it's cold. Come on. <laughs> You're switching your yeah. heat from the air conditioning to the heat to the air conditioning back and forth. It shouldn't be like that. Yeah. Well, we I think have a few more minutes, a couple minutes. We'll wait for more folks to join and before we do our official start. Hello, Mary Ellen. Good to see you. Good to Hi see there. our other our other Mary Ellen as well. <laughs> And, it's, um, it's warm here in Utah. It's 67 is the prediction today. Oh, wow. Oh, in my the mountains. gosh. Okay. So that's why I'm not skiing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, it was 27 in Alabama yesterday morning, and it's 57 now. That's it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. Wow. Big changes. Um, uh, so Kristen and some of the Cashmere Goat team might join us. They are still busily um, cleaning and organizing in the shop for our spring cleaning. And so they might take a little break and hop in here at some point. But it's been, we. I was there for Monday and Tuesday cleaning. And uh, it just, it was it's so satisfying to, um, to, to really get into that deep cleaning. You know, we're pulling all the yarn, the, cu the cubbies away from the walls to vacuum to dust and pulling all the yarn out of the cubbies to fluff it, make sure there's no moths that are trying to make, you know, comfortable places. And, and it just feels so good. And then Kristen was working hard, um, on, a couple of areas that have sort of bugged her in the shop for some time and wanting to um, wanting to get those better for how she likes it. And it's exciting. So we'll definitely do some little some little videos and updates for those of you who have been in the shop and know what it, it's been. It's, it's nothing drastic, but, you know, some especially around sort of organizing some of our notions, you know, it's such a hard thing. There's so many of them. How do you place them? So that's what those guys are are up to do you have the shawl pins you know the little wooden shawl pins that slide between the you need to display those sums okay i seem to have lost mine in my mm -hmm. yes and we were just talking about new homes for some of those ones i think they're by the luca or the likey then they have the pin and the round bit in the wood Yes. Um, and Kristen was just putting those up in a new spot. And yes. those, those stay put, whereas just the plain sticks manage to work their way out sometimes. And I like the ones that have to weave through and anchor. Yes. Oh, well, a couple more folks are coming in. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Great to see everybody. Let's share some time. And it's just like, we'll wait for like one more minute to see if anybody else pops in here and then we'll kick it off officially. Grab your knitting or a beverage if you need it. And I've just spotlighted Justina. 
Uh, so you're in the spotlight. So I just want to say official welcome to you. <laughs> yes, our incredible designer friends and coming oh, with I'm us. Blushing. Stop it. <laughs> you can't so really come... see, but yes, I am blushing. Stop it. <laughs> Well, um, so you're joining us from Poland, which we so appreciate uh, you making time to be with our group and allowing us to record this Zoom. I'm Iris from Cashmere Goat in Camden, Maine, and we've been working on the Soul Warmer towel by um, this lovely designer, Justina Lorkowska, and the Soul Warmer has been with us for uh, March, um, and maybe we could just do a quick little, um, anybody that wants to raise your hand and like show us the soul warmer, we could just kick it off that way a little bit different. So if you wanna, I'll start. And so I'll spotlight myself. Um, and so I'm wearing my first soul warmer here and I'm working on number two. Oh, I love the colors here. Yes, very very juicy, very juicy with this one. So those are my two. And this one will be living in the shop at, at the store. So yay. Anybody else want to give us a, oh, Pat, you want to? So go? I'm wearing, I'm wearing my first one. I thought it was just black and white, but when you put it like that, I'm like, wow. Oh, yeah, I know. Well, you know how they are when they fold up. And I finished my second one. Mm out of the Manos to Uruguay Fino. Um, and I'm, I just love them. I love them. Great idea. They're going to make great gifts. Something we can work on all year long. Thank you for your design. Thank you very much. Thank you for knitting them. Thank oh. you for knitting them. You know, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here, right? <laughs> well, we appreciate you. Thank you. Yes. Anybody else want to give a little show and tell? Oh, I see Linda. Let's do Linda next. I'm going to spotlight you up, Linda, so we can see. So mm -hmm. I made this one out of um, uh, Malabrego, Malabrego leftover uh, yarn from a project with not as many color variations. But it looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I love it, um, too. I love that. You don't really have to have many skeins, right? You can just use some leftovers that you have in your stash and that's it. Right, right. right. Beautiful. <clears throat> so nice. Thanks, Linda. Uh, Mary Ellen Mortola. Yes. Hi, yes. Hi. Here we are. Brilliant. So it's it's been really fun. And this yarn was supposed to be a gnome. And I'm so glad it's a cow. <laughs> <laughs> love it oh it's beautiful um anybody else like to give us a little oh mary ellen the other mary ellen mary ellen mulhern please take the spotlight Ooh, look at you go um i'm not finished but i'm almost done it already looks great um it, it was all many skeins in my stash nice some it's of them were for spring of the colors yeah. some of them were fino and i forget what the others were but uh, i made good use of my stash on this one it's brilliant. beautiful i love the the um the spring you know the ones that yeah really it looks like it, it looks like flowers and you know and and, yeah. and leaves and everything just very very spring like it's out of the box for me i usually do neutrals you know but my theme my my goal for 2024 is color brilliant <laughs> anybody else want to give us a little oh i see gwen let's see gwen hold I up the can't... spotlight it's not nice. finished but it's almost finished to get hoping the next couple of days to be done so lovely oh beautiful sort of blues and teals it looks like it's yeah it's the fino um augusta i think mm. so it's, it's yeah the blues and the the teals mm. lovely um anybody else nope 
Can I? <laughs> yes, please. Yes. So I'm mm -hmm. making again <laughs> with you. I mean, uh, not as a you know knit along, but I started this one uh, half a year ago. But I am reknitting some of my old samples in my own yarn, so I'm making it again. And um, I mean, the the palette is almost the same, right? So so it's again just like white and gray and gray and gray but <laughs> but i'm having fun again you know and it feels really really nice to be making your own work again and to look at the pattern and to rethink some things and so on and um i am doing this because i finally um out so to say <laughs> and i started dyeing yarn for myself and i'm renitting some of my older samples to be to have you know to have you you also knit for your shop right so I am not going to wear it probably. I'm just going to put it in a box and it's going to travel around Europe or world and that's it. So I do wear my older versions and I uh, I have somewhere in the in a box with you know accessories. Uh the one that was um I don't know if you recall from my Raverly there it was like gray yellow and this is the one I wear because that's the palette I generally wear at home. But this one is for show sample from this <laughs> right so yeah so anything with you sort of <laughs> yay oh we're so happy so thank you for being with us justina and we um are just delighted that we've been having so much fun i was telling justina um before we got going that um that really this this knit along has been such a perfect one um, people are having so much fun. We're playing with color. Um, we're getting outside of our comfort zones, just like Mary Ellen was saying. Um, and people seem like a more, maybe more willing to take a risk in an, in a, in an accessory, in something smaller, you know, it's not such a big investment. You think to yourself, well, maybe I could try yeah. a little of this color, even though it's not my usual. And, um, so that's a brilliant part, the ability to play with these different textures, a little bit of lace. We have had many new to lace knitters taking this on and having some success. Yes, we have had also some ripping out as well as it goes with lace sometimes. Don't worry, but... I do it too. I do it too. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> it's a part of the process, right? Remember, it's part of the process of learning, right? Totally. Even if you swear a lot, <laughs> it's part of the process. <laughs> Absolutely. So we would love to just start to hear a little bit from you about this design or about whatever you would like to start chatting with us about. And if questions come up for folks, um, I'll be keeping an eye on the chat, but also feel free to like raise a hand or pop in, I think would be fine as well. Is that okay with you, Justina? Yeah, yeah that's fine. Uh, so first of all, thank you so much for inviting me. Okay, I have to say it. And um, I'm right now in a different part of Poland. And it's and I'm still away from all the shows that are happening around Europe, well, because of a toddler. So if some of you follow me on Instagram or somewhere else, you know that I have a toddler at home and she's three. She just turned three and she's going to kindergarten in September. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I love her so much, but <laughs> enough, enough, come on. I need to start finally like real work. <laughs> but, um, and um, so oh, out, so to say, Partly because of the pandemic and then because, you know, of a, of a small baby and you can't really travel and organize everything logistically with a baby, but she is getting uh, bigger and there are plans to start going to shows. So um, hopefully I applied to one of the shows in Europe. So if you ever come to Europe, think November and I might be somewhere close to the ocean. Who won't say anything more yet okay <laughs> anyway um so this design is one of the designs that probably some of you noticed was from this book and it was a part of a collection and this one is called tabula rasa neutrals and oh i can just put it like here but if you go to raverly or if you go to my website justinanits.com uh we'll see somewhere in the text that it was a part of a collection and this collection is actually uh, pretty old because I think I published it in seven years ago, I think, right? So this book is about seven years uh, old. And um, so the idea, it's a small 
booklet, right? But printed in a really nice uh, way with my pictures and, and photography. And um, I mean, I'm still a fan. I love digital stuff, but I'm still a fan of books. Like, you know, when you can, and I still buy a lot of books from my fellow designers and um, I love them. So, so this, actually the colors of this one are so boring and monochrome because it was a part of a collection called neutrals right so everything was neutral in this book and this book has mostly some accessories that are as you can see uh, it has a shawl and it has uh, some some mittens and everything is neutral <laughs> right so uh, so I, the idea for this one was that I had some, a bundle of mini skeins and I wanted to, because mini skeins are very popular and we buy them. And even if I go to the shows or if I sell at the shows, I see that people buy a lot of them. They come home and I have no idea what to do with them. I'm sorry if I, I'm sorry if you hear my dog barking. <laughs> no. Okay. So, um, so I, from time to time, I also get mini skeins and I dye mini skeins, but I try to plan what they are going to be used for. So not just dye and put them into the world and just like, it's your problem. I dyed, it's your problem, do whatever you want. No, I try to create something that, okay, so this is the color palette I propose for you. This is something I like and maybe you also like. And what I see with this, for example, bundle of mini skeins is this a pair of socks, or maybe a cowl, or maybe I can use them in a shell, or maybe I can use them in a, um, for example, yoke in a sweater. So I, as much as possible to give um, yarn and a pattern combo so that knitters are not left alone. So if they feel inspired and if they see something on my Instagram and they say, I want it too, give me some time and I'll make it for you 100%. So I dye the yarn for you. I make the pattern for you. And I give you nice photos, I give you nice instructions, and there you go, okay? Um, and of course, you know, I know there are knitters who love just picking and choosing and, and buying yarn because we know for sure that knitting and collecting stash are two different hobbies. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, am, I am like that too. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm just a regular person, not only a designer. <laughs> So, but yeah, I know that, you know, at some point there is a, there is a time where you just go and buy whatever there is during a festival, but you come to a couple of festivals and then you say to yourself, like, enough is enough. I want to buy a project. I want to buy something that I will actually make and not just feed my stash, right? Um, for whatever reasons you have. I mean, for me, it's not like, you know, a man and nagging or anything like that. It's just my own frustration that I feel I like, I'm like collect, collecting, collecting, collecting and nothing happens. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so that was the idea, you know, to make a, or make something that's going to use many skeins. And uh, I think I, after some time, I don't know, I think two years later, I went further and I know that I noticed that people loved Sore Warmer because it's small, it's a very nice project for carrying. You just put it small, right? You put it in your bag, you can have it wherever, and you can make so many of them and just give them away to your friends or family. And I went further and I created another one, uh, but this time for one skein of, uh, it was some single ply uh, Tibetan yarn. And uh, I created Heart Warmer. So the name was just like, you know, it's sort of, came from soul warmer so now, now let's just name it heart warmer i stopped with the warmer don't worry right <laughs> no no other like feet warmer or nothing like that stop enough is enough but there is a second one and i probably uh i think that you've probably seen it somewhere and it has the same idea but there you have one skein of fingering weight yarn although the yardage on that yarn is pretty generous because it's like 560 yards so it's quite generous skein but the idea is similar so you have different sections of different stitch patterns a little bit of lace a little bit of texture a little bit of cabling and you don't get bored and again you have a really really nice cowl that just flies off your needle so and I um and I was talking to her before like and I 
probably found out why it happened that I like creating designs like that, that, you know, that have various stitch patterns or something that keeps me going, whether it's stripes or maybe some kind of eyelet somewhere here and there, or just some patterning, like a column that has repeat. Um, it's very, very likely. I mean, this is the plan for probably maybe this year, um, uh, depending on my finances, because I have, you have to go to a private doctor to do it in Poland. Um, I might be undiagnosed, newer spicy. <laughs> so that means that um, I am getting bored quite fast with mundane talking it. So I just try to, you know, change stitch patterns. And one of my, um, you know, one of my obsessions from um, early life became my job. So I need to keep it interesting. <laughs> For it to continue to be a job right so that i don't get another obsession and if if you if you if you know um anyone who's uh neuro spice you know that we do have obsessions that happen and they just go and that's it and this obsession became my life and i need to make it interesting <laughs> so so that's why i'm doing you know i'm trying to create stuff that is different all the time sort of the same but still different um yeah so um questions at this point mm -hmm. um so yeah so so tabula rasa is still available i think it's available on ravelry as a um, ebook so which is a digital form and i have printed books and you can get them from my website uh, i tried i remember that when i published it i tried contacting ravelry if they allow people to sell like real things and there was a problem somewhere, you know, with uh, in the past with people selling um, tangible objects through Ravelry, like books. And, uh, you know, the owners of Ravelry, they had problems because uh, there were there were like transactions completed and people did not send the, you know, stuff. So for that to work, they would have to have stock where they are, but they don't do it. So the only way I, I can offer it is through my website. Um, and it had two parts, actually. One was the, the first one was neutrals. And the second one was speckle. Uh, so um, I, I think it's pretty easy to guess what this one is about. Um, so it's about, I think it's reversed. I can't reverse it. So it's tabula rasa speckles. And here um, I have basically designs that are speckled, like hats that that was the crown from a hat um like shawls um the cow that i had here was completely different um this was this one of the what do you call them bandana cows that you have they they, they begin like a triangular shawl but at some point you connect it and you knit in the round right so um so yeah and um there might be a bigger project coming next year, but I just started and um, I don't want to jinx it. So look out next year, <laughs> be on the lookout. <laughs> um, it will not be a tubular rasa, it will be something different. Um, so the, the, the other question that you asked me was how did I start designing um, apart from um, making my obsession my job? Um, is that, well, in the past, very, very many years ago, um, I used to be a teacher and I taught in elementary school. And um, at some point uh, when I had my kids uh, in my previous marriage, at some point I was staying home and uh, my husband said, like, maybe you could, because my husband, he was crawling, you know, like uh, the kids are crawling in the beginning, you know, when they sit down etc and it was really really cold it had really cold floor and he said like maybe you could just I know that you I remember that you had you, you did something or you crocheted so maybe you could make something for him so that he wouldn't get cold and I logged on to uh, Allegro which is sort of like Polish sort of like that and I bought some cheap yarn and I cast on and I made um fairly ugly vest 
that <laughs> for my son, you can, if you scroll down through my projects on Raverly, it will be somewhere at the bottom <laughs> with my, on my son. It was blue and white striped. And then I, um, it was just the beginning, I think, of all the internet forums and all the internet website and communities. And I found out Raverly. And um, I got hooked immediately, probably just like you, right? And I started knitting and then I started sort of found out that knitting from other people's project designs is okay-ish for me because I have a tendency to drift off. So I was like, well, maybe I could start making something myself because, you know, if my mind pushes me somewhere, I can always just write it down and make it a pattern. And this is what I did. And the first design I published was uh, a hat called I Heart Cables. And it was published actually in the US, I think in the US or maybe Canada. And it was, I don't know if you guys remember, there was a website called Petite Pearls. It was a free, just like nitty.com right now is for all the knitters out there. And it's a free website with patterns. And they publish, I think, three or four times a year, nitty.com, probably you know it. Um, and there was a website, similar website like that, but only with kids' designs. And it was called Petite Pearls. And uh, I published over there, I published a hat and this hat became popular and I sort of started publishing more and more and more. And at that point I was still working at a school and started designing more and more and more. And I had to go to my boss at school and say, well, you know what? Um, I keep getting so many requests and so many collaborations from other people around the world, from Yarnies, etc., that I have to design from a job. And I was thinking whether it should be teaching or whether it should be uh, designing. And I decided that... A this point in my life designing is much better and it was like what do you mean designing I mean, and I said well you know I knit a sample and I write down the instructions and with my tech editor we check if, if everything is okay then we have test knitters and so on and then I create this file in pdf format and I sell it around the world and people buy it people buy it <laughs> like, like, yeah yeah, a lot of people buy it. For real, right? I mean, no, it's a real job. Oh, wait a second. Agnieszko, słucham cię. My daughter is here, right? <laughs> she, she, she's listening, but she can't speak English. And she's like, mama, mama. <laughs> and um, she was really, really shocked that I'm resigning from a real job for knitting. I think it was th for three years, every year, the school year began, he called me saying, Justyna, would you like a group? Because I used to teach English. Would you like a group or two? Because, well, I have students for you. I was like, no, no, I'm still knitting. I mean, you shouldn't you just like, if people buy it, come on. <laughs> a real job is waiting for you. And no, I never, I never came back, right? And and he, I think he tried like three or four times and then I met him somewhere in a shop and he's like, congratulations. I mean, this is really, but they, all of them were shocked. <laughs> and right now, you know, when I meet muggles and uh, when they ask like what my job is and I, um, I'm pretty vague. I just say like, I design stuff because um, it's too difficult and <laughs> probably imaginary for them <laughs> that people can be you know making a living doing stuff like that. I mean especially in Poland because in the US I think abroad uh, it's much more popular and people actually um, consider it a job I mean especially when I went to festivals um, around the world and I saw that I mean this is a real job come on there are so many freelancers right but in Poland it's still different and um, the other thing is that uh, Polish people, um, they are too afraid, I think, to speak English. And most of them are very, very reluctant to speak English, right? And I'm still having problems explaining, like, come on, I'm using the language that the whole world knows. 
I'm just putting my work out there for everybody. It's as easy as it gets, right? I don't want to first publish in Polish and then expect for people to come and learn Polish. No, it's so much easier. And English language, I mean, English knitted language is so easy. All the abbreviations and I mean, yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's sort of how I started knitting. And there's this history. <laughs> We love we love hearing from our designers and, and thank you for that little window into your world as a designer. We had a question in the chat from Pat who was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the beautiful shawls behind you and tell us a little bit about that. Of course. <laughs> I mean, I have a couple of shawls that uh, probably you saw somewhere on Instagram. And uh, these are right now and I think I'm I'm showing the most uh, right now so the red one that I'm going to fetch in a second uh, this one is still not published it will be published next week it's not published because I just got sick of course Cecily was sick last weekend and she recovered like that and of course I did not recover like that <laughs> she gave me a horrible back and so I'm still sick and I was supposed to take uh, pictures tomorrow, but with the way I look and with the way I feel, no way it's happening. So I'm booked uh, for the weekend. And so when I take pics of this one, it will be published, I think, in Monday or Tuesday. We'll see how it goes, right? I mean, it went to my tech editor for last edits and my, t my test knitters are finishing knitting it. And it's... Uh, that it's a crescent shawl it's very light and airy and um i've noticed that probably right now i'm in my leafy stage because most of the designs i make right now have leaves on them. <laughs> and but you know these are so feminine and so delicate and wherever i you know take my stitch bibles and everything and i look at the patterns and the lace work and it's like oh no i don't like this one this one no it looks like holy or not holy enough and every time it's just like leaves flowers because they feel so so nice so this one is actually it's very very it looks complicated but it's not it has just two sections that i repeated throughout the shawl it has garter and these garter parts they are worked in fluffy lace weight uh i used my own because this one was again it's from my um, yarn class pattern ideas. So this is my own yarn and I dyed it and I created a pattern. And again, I will also be offering kits, yarn yarn kits, and uh, but that's, that's going to happen next week. So, so the, the garter parts, they have um, fluffy lace weight. It can be mohair, it can be suri, alpaca, whatever you have in your stash, but that has to be a skein of 400 meters. So that's 414 yards, right? Those 50 gram skeins. So that's just like regular skein of, um, I mean, from indie dyers, regular skein of any fluffy lace weight, right? So whether it's mohair, whether it's suri, alpaca, for me, that's, um, again, yak, alpaca silk and a merino this one is called nebula the the the, the fluffy um the fluffy yarn and uh, the fingering weight part that's the same yarn i use for this one that's the yak merino silk blend those rich skeins the rich yarded skeins which have 506 yards and they are called um i hope i'm pronouncing them right tibetanus and that's the name of a bear right in some language i don't know if it's just latin or some other language and um so that's fingering weight basically but that's single ply fingering weight and it the two sections are repeated it's just like garter lace garter lace garter lace but it's very very light because of the because of the fluff, right? And the nebula is completely different from mohair because it's not itchy. I work with mohair. I hate wearing mohair. 
So whenever I work with Mohair, I just make samples mostly or I work for I make something for somebody else or I design because I'm that's my job but when it comes to wearing I don't really wear mohair because I mean it itches me not that I'm allergic it's just like you know the hairs they are just very sharp to me for this one this one is I don't know what to call it it's just like fluff like dawn so it's completely different. So it's still lightweight, just like mohair, and it has fabric similar to mohair, but you don't really have this this itchy factor, right? So that's why I want. I said like I want some fluffy yarn to offer to people that's not itchy that I can actually wear. So yeah. So this is the second one. It still has no name. Um, the working name is Kissable Shawl because the colorway is called Kissable. Um, but I think I will be having a contest. Um, not sure if today or maybe tomorrow for the name for a shawl. So if you're interested, you can take part because it's going to be a giveaway, right? Because I don't I have no idea. I'm terrible at naming design, which probably is not visible, but it is, believe me. And also writing the blurbs with um, inspiration. I have a wonderful tech editor who just says, you still give me a couple of words and I create the Romans copy. <laughs> like brilliant because I can knit, I can do everything, just not write Roman's copy. <laughs> so another design that I have here is the scarflets, which you probably saw somewhere. And this is a one skein shawl, as long as you have the same gauge, uh, which means that um, it uses one skein, again, of this Yak Reno silk blend, single ply blend, it's called scarflet. And this one is actually a difficult pattern, a difficult pattern because this one is parted all the time because, I mean, the lace work, the, it goes like that. The lace itself, um, I think the, you probably know them as the Japanese stitch patterns, you know, with the quite complicated lace work against sleeves. Um, but, um, right, I mean, I'm very visual. So if I was super, if I was to write patterns for myself, I would probably just make charts, some numbers and charts. And everything is just like, okay, I see a chart and I can knit. And uh, for this one, I uh, wrote down the written instructions too. And there was a, the test took us quite a while uh, because we wanted to make the pattern concise and not have a pattern for a showlet that's actually pretty small and a pattern of 25 pages. It was like, no way, <laughs> no, we can't do something like that. And we came out, I mean, we found like solutions to that. So uh, the instructions at the beginning, they, they can seem a little bit confusing and difficult, but there are repeats, I mean, if you, if you, um, focus a little bit at the beginning and try to memorize the the uh, stitch repeat right the pattern repeat it becomes easier and understandable and I formatted the um, the charts in a way so that they match and you can actually print them out and cut out and stick them all together and it will create a full chart okay but this is a difficult design I'm not saying that you can't make it you can just Quite difficult, okay? If you're very new to lace knitting, you might need some help, but I have a wonderful tech editor and we have support. So um, we do offer support, don't worry, right? There are people making it. And but if and if you read charts, you can do it. It's the is and, Christina, is is it's the scarflet, is that right? Yeah, that's okay. Scarflet. I'm gonna just exactly. I'm going to put the um, link in the chat so people can look at it too. That's Kerflet. I mean, it, um, I know that there were some people saying like, oh, this is terrible because, you know, I can't really understand the instructions. I mean, the pattern is just like the, you know, how do you say it? Um, like a solution between volume of words that I can just put on you, uh, making something understandable, okay? At the beginning, it may sound like, oh my God, I can get it. I don't get it. It's too overwhelming. No, believe me, that is quite logical. Just need you just need to follow. You just need to trust me and my tech editor, right? Um, but if you need if you if you use charts, 
okay? Uh, if you know how to read charts, it should be fairly easy because, I mean, the, the stitch patterns, once once you understand it and when you create one, one pattern repeat, you'll see that, okay, it's repeated all the time. But what does it pattern, what does it have? It has increases, definitely, and decreases because, you know, you have to create the shape. It has I-court edging, which probably some of you are familiar with it, right? It has um, cabling, but the cables are not very difficult. Big, the biggest cables that there are, they are composed of five stitches because you have those two that cross like that and the one in the middle, okay? So the, mm -hmm. big, the biggest cables, they involve five stitches and lace. And once you have a couple of repeats and you see the pattern develop, right? You will see, okay, I made a mistake here or I have to do this here. And at some point, you know, when I was knitting it and I was creating, at some point I was just like, you know, going from my head, like, oh, come on, come on. You have to note down stuff, right? To, so that people, you know, can make it too. So yeah, yeah. this one is quite popular. And uh, what I love, I love that, you know, the weather that's changing right now. And I finally wore it because during winter, not so much because it's, um, I mean, it's thin. It's just like carflat, right? But the weather that we are having right now, when it's not cold and it's just like regular typical March weather it's brilliant you know so you just put it on and uh, you can wear it um, just to keep your you know neck a little bit warm just like a cowl and the last one you know this one too uh, this one is called foliosa again leaves <laughs> so well this one is um Crescent shawl, quite similar. I mean, similar in the construction to my old work, which is called Ashlyn, and it's uh, a a s l i n g Ashlyn. That's Irish, I think. And uh, but this one is folio foliosa. It's f l o i s a, and it's um crescent shawl that has the body that you knit like a regular shawl and again it has sections okay sections two sections that I mean actually three because that's a uh, garter then you have ribbing lace ribbing lace but it's the same chart and you knit the body just like a regular shawl and then you attach a border lace border this way to the shawl so you don't continue outwards you just continue like that and this border it closes it binds off the body and creates this ornamental edge and it makes the edge very stretchy once you block it mm -hmm. okay so i mean this is my favorite construction of a shawl i mean i absolutely love it and they they are so feminine they can be worn just like when you go on a date when you go to a wedding when you go somewhere and depending on the color, you can just, you know, dress up or dress down. And for this one, I also offered um, yarn kits, right? And this one is, again, also my yarn. Um, I am working on a design um, that's going to be published during summer. And I found out a fabulous base. It's a cashmere blend, but it's a high twist cashmere blend. And it's just... It's so fluffy and so buttery soft. It's like, oh, I have to make something very special with it because I would not wear it as a sweater. It has to be something very special. Mm -hmm. So there will be a show. It will be published in the summer. Um, and again, similar construction. So again, feminine with the knitted on border and with fabulous yarn. And I can only say that it's going to be blue, right? But the yarn is uh, the yarn is already waiting. I already bought, bought blank skeins for to prepare kids and everything, so everything is waiting. But this one is going to be planned for summer because I have a lot of other things, you know, the bigger projects that I have to work on and that I can't show to anybody. So, so it's going to be paced, let's say. Um, so yeah, so these are the shawls that I have, and um, and I also have the mohair one, the the last one that I made. Um, which feels completely different to Nebula. Harry, <laughs> my, my daughter, my do the youngest daughter, she she came to me and it was still pre-blocked, and she touched it and was like, "Mommy, why are you knitting with hairs?" 
like no 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 honey this is yarn that has hair only <laughs> and she was like why why are you making this <laughs> apart from the other question that she asked me why aren't you making my own close to usual oh yeah. well, this is this is wonderful to hear all this and hear you speak about your designs um just you know really really wonderful especially like I think it's interesting always for us the knitter to be hearing about like let's say your preference as you said your preference for a design like the type of design that that is enjoyable for you with that particular shawl and the edging and how that works out I think that that's really fascinating for folks um does anybody have questions for Christina could unmute if you would like <coughs> spotlight you I mean, the thing is that, you know, sometimes um, there are different motivate people have different motivations for knitting and uh, designers have different motivations for knitting, right? Of course, we want to create something for other people, but sometimes you just want to try a different construction and see how it works. Or you have something, some idea in your head and uh, you see how it works. You want to see how it works, and believe me, that there are designs in my shop that I was so excited about, and people were not. <laughs> right? <laughs> there are things like that, and there are designs that I was like, "Oh, I have to make this," and I just made it just like that, and bang, it became a hit. It's like, hey, it's just so simple and not interesting. <laughs> yeah, but you know, people. You know, people have different motivation, right? So I get my kicks out of making something that's, you know, that ch touches something in me, right? Whether it's in my head or in my heart. And people just generally want to make something wearable. <laughs> uh, I saw a question about my English. Uh, well, my English right now, I feel it sucks. So I'm sorry if I'm making mistakes. Seriously. Seriously. I used to speak much better English, but... Uh, the only language I speak right now is the toddlerish, mostly, right? <laughs> my the, the the language of my daughter. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I used to I used to study English at university, and um, I have a degree in English. And yeah, so that's where when I was um, when I was working in a school, I was teaching English to kids. And um, yeah, so I stopped teaching English, but I still teach using English so uh, right now mostly I just connect with knitters and uh, from time to time I teach mostly during festival so I try to travel and um, there were some uh, some shows or some events that I traveled to in the past uh, hopefully it will come back again in the future and when you know Cecily grows up and she goes to kindergarten because that stopped pandemic and um, and having a young child right but I was in the U.S. a couple of times and I was in Canada and um, I traveled to many shows around Europe and taught about knitting and shaping knitwear and about shawls, etc. And so thank you if you think I speak whole good English. Um, I'd rather well, have better English. <laughs> I always, I always like whenever there's someone who is speaking beautiful English to me that's not a native speaker, I'm always thinking to myself, you know, please, how many of us here on the Zoom could speak with a group? Uh, like, could we, any of us speak fluently as fluently as you to communicate with a group of other people in their own language and be as be as articulate? So no, it's it's beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, a question, you know, I keep, I keep oh. telling, you know, Polish people like, I mean, you don't really have to speak English but to learn the basics for from knitting patterns. And there are so many patterns, not my patterns, so many patterns by other people out there around the world that are so wonderful. I mean, why would you limit yourself to just, you know, the Polish abbreviations and Polish instructions? Why? Come on, it just opens the world. And I mean, I love other people's work. I mean, if my day was longer, I would be knitting all the time, not my own stuff, other people's work, right? I, I had a question that I was wondering about. Is your tech editor uh, like a native English speaker or also Polish? Uh, no, she lives in Florida. Okay. Yep. <laughs> cool. 
Eleanor, um, Eleanor is American. Yeah, and I actually stayed. Um, it was when we were publishing together the second one, the um, the speckled one, the the book. I stayed with her for a week, and it was in December. So, yeah, she she's American, and we've been working together for oh my god, I think soon it will be like ten years. Yeah. Wow. Well, I have to say, yeah, just from, from a formatting point of view, I really love the fact that I'm able to fold this in half and in quarters and look at the part that I want to look at. Like that, to my, that makes my brain very happy. I will just say that. That's an aside. It's not about mine, your design. Mine it's not... too. Thank you. Okay. Mine too. <laughs> I mean, um, I try to, there are some things that I really like, I mean, that I really focus on. So Try to make the formatting readable. Mm -hmm. Try not to have so many pages and so much text that it does not uh, consume a lot of paper. Uh, try to make it easy actually to fold. Put the pictures at the beginning and at the end of the pattern so that you don't have to print them. Never put them into the text so you don't print, you don't use ink that you don't have to, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'd love to, I have to definitely um, look into making uh, it more digital friendly, right? But there's just so much work happening right now that it will happen in the future, probably, uh, you know, for, for everybody. So so that, you know, people who have, for example, um, eye impairment, they can also use patterns, right? I But I need to look into that and I need to find um, some time or maybe somebody to work with who can just do a couple, at least a couple of designs, the most popular ones, um, to make them more um, friendly for people with, for example, eye impairment, right? Mostly that's, you know, I'm just, my eyesight is terrible too. Permitting, probably. <laughs> we we have one of our local, or we call them our local goats, um, who, who's a regular at Knitting Group, and her name is Christy, and she um, has some challenges with her vision and with using finer weight yarn. So we kind of helped support her with so to, with adapting the pattern for a heavier weight. So she's made a couple of soul warmers now using a worsted weight. She's using the Malabrigo Rios and she's made a few of her own explorations. So it's like the soul warmer inspired into like, it's it's her own Brilliant. twists on it, which is so cool, you know, and, and there's been other, a few other knitters too who, like, oh, I don't think I want this, this lacy leaves. I can't do it. I'm doing something else. It's just, it's the kind of pattern that inspires, I think, our own creativity, which is really, really wonderful too. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have a question? This has been so much fun. Mm -hmm. I see, I see you're knitting all the time this because I stopped I should probably just continue <laughs> to finally to finally finish it at some point right I mean the the show that it's going to be a show sample sometime in autumn or fall in fall so I still have lots of time but <laughs> I mean the sample I finished the gray uh the gray mohair one it, it took me about a year um yeah, I mean, um, because, you know, there are design, the, the knitting that I do for a job, like to create new designs, this is something that's happening all the time, right? This is something I'm working on all the time. And apart from that, I do need to work on this other project. And I still need to make some kind of samples. I do have a sample knitter, but um, because I'm slightly paranoid about uh, the things that things have to look perfect, you know, that's, this is my own thing. So sometimes I'd rather just make something myself. <laughs> and um, so I cast on this one uh, because the original sample, this one is called High Hopes. Uh, the original sample I gave away to somebody and um, I just lost it. I mean, I mean, not lost it. I gave it away as a gift. And then I figure, like, hmm, if I'm offering kits for people on my website, I probably should make the sample, you know, using the yarn. So I cast on, I think, a year ago. And it was just like a project that, you know, was somewhere and I knit a row or two from time to time. But um, I stopped. I, I finished a couple of projects last month. And I was like, OK, this is the time. So um, I have to finish this one. 
and I did cast on also a new Flaum. I don't know if you know the cardigan called Flaum. It's F-L-A-U-M. It was first published in Annie Risu magazine many years ago. It's like a cropped um, fisherman's ribbed cardigan. It's quite popular. And the sample that I have, which I still love, it's made in using Quince & Co. But um, I mean, I put on weight, right? And I changed my, my body in the last 10 years. So I need to make a sample, a, a, a new sample, and I'm making a new sample using my yarn and using the, the nebula, the fluffy lace. But I just started and um, I started like two months ago and I just have the collar. <laughs> Right. So it is a slow project. It will happen probably sometime this year. And is Flaum, do I remember correctly? Because I think I did look at, at that one. It, there is it half fisherman's rib? Is that? Yes. Yeah. It's I mean it's fisherman's rib. Fisherman's Part of rib. The, the the yoke, the yoke is just ribbing and the, the bands are ripped and the sleeves are ripped. But this part in here it's fisherman's rib, right? So um I mean just it just basically Right, it just work a little bit differently, but it looks the same as brioche <laughs> completely. Right, I mean, I've noticed that it's easier, I think, to incorporate all the increases and in shaping of a sweater into mm. fisherman's rib. Right? I mean, um, of course, you know the increases work the same, but um, for knitters, when they when they already have one stitch with all the you know the yarn overs over the stitches, when they have just one stitch it's easier to just like control all the stitches and all the shaping of a sweater that you have, I think. Just my personal opinion. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I've, been putting, I've been putting some links into our chat, but I will also just for everybody on the, on the Zoom here and if you're watching the recording, I'll make sure to put them in the, in the notes below our YouTube recording when we post it there. So if people wanna come back and reference reference those again. Um, yeah, I also I put in a couple of the links to the heart warmer, the cowl, and then the shawl. But I see also that just from my brief little search, there's a t-shirt. There's looks like maybe yeah. a hat as well. Beautiful. Yes, I went down a rabbit hole with that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Like, and then bam, you have like a sweater and a, and a hat and this and socks and you know because you have stitch patterns, so you can make you can dress from head to toe, you know, in the same stitch patterns. Love it. At the same time, not the same, right? Because you keep changing. <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, but the thing is that uh, first I made the cowl, and then uh, I think somebody said to me, "Why don't you make a shawl? A shawl, you know, out of the stitch patterns because they would look re really nice." And I made the shawl, and then again somebody's like, "You know, could be a great top," and I made the top, and then I said. Why the hell not make a hat and socks too? <laughs> and and there was a person who said like I was like no 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 yeah. I'm done <laughs> no <laughs> I'm done enough is enough. Uh, my heart my heart is warm enough yes <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> oh it's so great. Um, I did have a like more than one knitter who was um new to lace say that in the leave section and it was so it was so it was like for those of us that are less confident lace centers <laughs> and we we place our markers you know with the 12 row repeats which is so helpful for segmenting and um you know multiple times as you're working through the the leaves lace which is so pretty you're you're coming up with a yarn over that actually has a yarn over around your marker because it's on like the 12th stitch and two two different knitters I think one was zoom one was maybe in person in the shop said why would she do this to us this is very difficult to do a yarn over around this marker and I was like oh well I mean not everybody uses markers in our lace and <laughs> she's probably thinking of her design more than the people that might need to use a marker and do a yarn <laughs> over. <laughs> but it, it, yes, I mean, I think, but the nice part is that I, I, I have, I've seen a number of knitters who this, this felt like a manageable first step towards lace. And yeah, because the, I yeah. think there are just two repeats of the pattern, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this lace, um, picking the, I knew that the, there, there were supposed to be leaves. And I, when I was picking the different type of lace, 
Um, there are leaves that are more spread, so to say. And when I was designing this one, I had to also consider the, uh, the number of stitches in a repeat so that they would all work to cast on number, right? And then, uh, you know, if you have everything that's spread out, and because here you have yarn overs happening in every round, right? Uh, this stitch pattern is quite difficult to work um, when you work back and forth, when you have mm -hmm. right side and wrong side. But in the round, it's like, okay, people can do it because it's in the round. And there was just one point where you had to move a marker because there was the, there was a decrease right of the marker, right? And, um, but, but, you know, this, this um, stitch pattern is actually quite small. It's just two repeats, which is quite manageable. And then again, you start with the most difficult part. Once you get through it, everything is just like, ah, this call is so easy. <laughs> I like that psychological, um, that psychological sort of approach, like, you know, you really have to focus and then, and then yes, and so you get the nice, nice little stripes, you get a little bit of yarn over. And um, I think one of the things that we have definitely learned with our knit alongs is choosing the right pattern is, is and Kristen, the shop owner, and I, you know, think a lot about it because part of the knit along experience is the social component you know people whether we're knitting together on zoom yeah. or whether we're knitting together in person it can't be like so demanding every second and then people get frustrated and have to end up ripping out and yeah. so it's nice to have a pattern that sort of has has some sections for interest but then also a little bit of section for relaxation and so so you can I've had people say, well, I had to make sure I got through my whatever section it was so that when I came to knitting group on Sundays or or whatever, or when I came to the Zoom, I would just have easy peasy while I was hanging yeah, out. Yeah, just a stuck in it to talk, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, whenever, I mean, I stopped knitting too because I have right now, I'm at the, uh, the second place, which is, you know, the holes and just like, no, I'm going to make mistakes. When I talk, I'm going to make mistakes. And I learned this the hard way. When I was in Edinburgh uh, many years ago, and I had a very complicated cardigan with me in a pub. And that was a bad decision. And it taught me a lot about knitting and talking and drinking <laughs> <laughs> and making making a cardigan with tables, seven uh, pockets and <laughs> shaping like, nope, not doing it again. So every time I go to, you know, any kind of a me meeting or to a pub or gathering, I always take garter. Always. <laughs> it has to be just something very, very simple so that even if I make mistakes, I see them immediately. Right. And never, ever dark yarn. Never. <laughs> that, that the sweater I was making, it was green melon tosh. <laughs> I can't remember the name of this, but there was some some collection. But yeah, that had a lot of ripping time involved, <laughs> and a lesson learned, right? <laughs> we all we all have to learn them uh, for sure. Well, we are just at the one hour mark, Justina, and it's been an absolute delight to have you and have so much time with you. Um, hear so much about your process, and we are just so grateful to have knit this and then have the opportunity to chat a bit today with you. So thank you so very much for your time. Thank you so much for having me and happy knitting guys. I hope you like it. <laughs> oh, we love it. Thank you. Thanks so much and happy spring. Thank you. Likewise, likewise. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Take care.